Okay, so here is one of them. They're, they're mostly dry. I've got my jelly plate back out. Some of my stencils and my stamp. First of all, just take a minute to have a think about where you want to place things. So with the stamp, we might want to mirror some of these shapes on there. And I think on this one, rather than the cow parsley, I'm going to use a bird stencil. Um, and I'm going to do the bird in some pink, just as a as a nice um, contrasting color color that is going to stand out. If you haven't got a jelly plate, you can just sponge through the stencil to make your print. This um, quinacridine magenta is quite transparent, so let's see how it goes. I might end up putting another layer of something else on top. Now, with these stencils, if you can see, I've got um, more than one and it's quite close to each other so what I really want to do is mask that off I'm just going to put a piece of paper in there so that the paint doesn't go through and really Press it down and make sure that the paint transfers. Now, so that you don't waste it, I would usually get another piece of paper and just print that bird on so that I could use this later at some point in something because this is going to be the ghost print. Just put that to one side and use it later. Let's do two birds. We're going to add some details, details to the birds later with paint pen and actually if you like you can let these I'll show you you can let, let these layers dry and line up the stencils and put an extra color down So again, I'm going to put my paper underneath there so that this one doesn't transfer. The nice thing about using the little jelly plate is that you can really see where you're placing your images on your paper. get rid of that ink and roll on a stamp so to do that I'm going to put a little bit of my paint just on a little plastic lid so that I can roll it out and I think with them, I'm, I'm going to use a darker one. I'm going to use this Prussian blue. I'm 
Now again I'm using Golden Open because I've got much longer drying time than you do with normal paints. And you can use normal paints for this. Obviously you wouldn't be talking to someone like I am and you'd be working a lot faster. And you maybe don't get quite as, uh, um, as an exact print because there might be some bits that have slightly dried that don't that don't print onto the stamp. But that can have a nice effect as well. Now I'm just gonna take a tissue and give this a little wipe. Still sticky. Because I don't want those bits to go. into my picture and let me think about where this is going to go I think I'm going to put it this is why I like longer drying times because it takes me ages to decide what I'm doing and you can either just press it down or you can take another roller roll over I think I'll do one more one more print of the stamp The other thing that you can do with these foam stamps, if you like, is that you can actually press into them before you print and you'll get extra patterns. And you see that that lifted some of the paint because I didn't do it with the tissue. That's okay. I'm just going to take a baby wipe that's dried out and a little bit of water and just lift that off gently. I don't really want that on my print. blend it into the background. Right, so that one is finished, you can see. We'll do a little bit of detail with paint pen at the end. I'm going to hang that one up to dry. Let's do this one here. I'm not so sure about this dark blue so I think I might cover some of this up, the stencils. And maybe get the cow parsley onto this one. Cover some of it up with the cow parsley. Um, I'm going to try some white on this, I think. And instead of using the golden, which is quite transparent, I'm going to try just using normal acrylics. You have to work much faster with normal acrylics. Okay. you're working with normal acrylics, have everything lined up ready to go before you roll your paint out. So this is masking the bird. You don't want the bird on the print. Okay.
nice. I might do a few of these. The, this is going to dry quite quickly, so I could layer them up with different colours. I'm just going to ghost print this one, get rid of this. Maybe do one more white cow parsley and then maybe a couple of pink cow parsley or green cow parsley. So just bear in mind that if you're using a stencil and the paint is still wet, not to turn it over and try and do it the other way. If you want to have it the other way, then either wait for the paint to dry or um, wipe it off with a baby wipe. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give this a wipe with a baby wipe and turn it over just so I get a variation. Do it in a slightly different colour so that it stands out. I think I might just add a little bit of this to some white just to change it slightly. So again I'm going to put it onto a palette and use a sponge. I want it a different colour because it's overlapping so you wouldn't see it otherwise. So right, you don't want too much on your sponge, you want it to be quite thin because if you put too much it bleeds through and you need to hold with your fingers and make sure that the stencil does not move too much. So I'm going to hold it here just with my finger.
I might do is put something up here just to cover up this blue. I'm thinking maybe a bird. In white. Let's do a bird in white. So we'll just do that with the jelly plate really quickly. dull this down a little bit with a bit of sponge painting. So I'm going to get the colours that I used carry on doing the same with these. Let's just very, very quickly add some stencils and stamps.
or on your um, plants or whatever you cut as a stencil. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out a bit of a darker blue. So here's some Prussian blue. And you don't actually need to go all the way to the edge of the jelly plate if you know that the stencil is not that big. And then you're going to place your stencil back down exactly where it was. And then find something as a pattern. So here I've got a doily. Place that down and then very carefully put down your jelly plate. Let's see. Can you see that that's put a pattern on our bird? In exactly the correct spot. It's quite cute. Might do that in the other one as well. Could probably use the ghost ink. Just use the ghost ink and see what it looks like. Okay, for the last part, we're not going to spend too long on this. Um, usually in my prints, I spend ages drawing onto them, but we've done so many layers already. Um, this is just going to be a final touch. I've got my big box of pens. My favourite ones to use are the um, Uniball Signo White. It works really well on top of... Um, mixed media and Posca paint pens. So I'm just going to look out a few colours. I'm not going to use a lot. Um, colours that go with the ones that I've already got. So in greens, I've got two different greens. The thickness that I prefer is, these are the um, PC1M, which is the fine tipped. And then these are the PC1MR, which is the ultra, ultra fine tipped. So I'm just going to look out a few colours of those. And um, so pink, green, white, um, light pink. Maybe a little bit of peach and orange, just to complement what we've already got. And then, and if you want a bit of sparkle, some gel pen, gel pens are nice. And if you want some black pen detail, um, I like Copic markers or. Just the Unipen, these are fade proof, these ones. And basically you just want to do a bit, a bit of doodling. So I might pick out <clears throat> areas to go around and add detail to, maybe especially on the birds. 
And if you want, you can have a quote or maybe add a quote to one of these. I don't generally add quotes to my art, but um, it might be quite nice to add one to this actually. Okay. I'm going to leave this one. I like it the way it is. It doesn't have too much on it. Okay, here we've got the other one with the cow parsley. I'm just going to very briefly work on that just a little bit.
this one I'm going to put a coat on it. Um, I might add a little bit more to the ribbon first. and it says gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul and I thought that that went quite well with my plants so I'm going to start off I actually you can't really see it but I've actually drawn very lightly in pencil just to give me an indication of where I want my lettering to be and I'm going to start off quite lightly with the white pen so that if I do make a mistake, it's not so committed. So if you can see this finished piece, I've put the coat in and just put underneath it in purple so it stands out a little bit and mirrored the colours in the rest of the print. Just put little details on the bird and and little details on the plant. And in this piece, again, I added some details to the birds and just those two blue plants. You could go on and add more if you want. Um, okay, I actually added some more onto this one as well. I added some paint pen around the stamps and then if you can see I put some extra little paint pen leaves hanging down. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you've come away with lots of techniques that you can follow in your printing and using making your own stamps and stencils and putting it all together with a bit of mixed media and collage.